Mass Effect is one of those things for me, like Star Wars or Modest Mouse. I never talk about it, I never think about it, and I never write about it, but if you ask me about it, I will be able to rant to the point we will all get tired of hearing my voice. I mean, of course I love it, just look at this channel's name. There's just so much to love about the games, from the characters, the world, and the lore, the characters, the writing, the characters, Blasto, Drunk Taui, and the characters. It's all really great, especially the characters. However, one aspect that it feels like we all tend to gloss over is how these games actually play in moments of combat. And given that any Mass Effect game is made roughly one-third out of combat, this probably shouldn't be the case. So, in honor of my recently completed annual replay of the Mass Effect trilogy, let's all take a moment to examine and critique the very different combat mechanics in each of the three Mass Effect games. Before we get started though, let's set the stage a little. First, this is all based off the console version of the game, specifically the PS3 Trilogy Edition which comes with this DLC. So I will be including some things related to those in my discussion as I consider them to currently be part of the base game. Now let's look at what elements all three games do have in common. Starting from Mass Effect 1, all three games' combat is primarily centered around cover-based gunplay. You have six classes, all of which have some varied level of focus on either gunplay, tech-based buffs, debuffs, and distractions, and space magic, aka biotics. In each game, you have two separate companions in your party that you can order around to one extent or another, and they all have two categories of enemies, synthetic and organic. Finally, each game provides you with different weapons and pieces of armor to choose between that affect your performance to one degree or another. From here though, each game begins to mix up how it uses each of these elements. Now, let's just rip this band-aid off right now. Despite all of its interesting ideas and its amazing polish and areas, Mass Effect 1's combat has not aged exceptionally well. Like, don't get me wrong, it hasn't aged as bad as some games, but if it were released today, I firmly believe it would never hit the mainstream. Limp is the best way I can think to describe it as a whole. First, there's the guns. Massively ballooning reticles and wavering first-person aiming make the assault rifle, pistol, and sniper rifle less satisfying to use than they could be. The assault rifles have this deep, bassy firing sound that finishes with a revving down bit at the end that makes them feel like they should be a lot more powerful than they are, but they just aren't. So what you get as a result is a weapon that feels spongier and weaker than it should be. Likewise, the sniper rifle has this deep, thunderous firing sound that doesn't even really resemble a gun, and it just feels weird. The pistol feels fine, but, you know, it's a pistol, and it sure as hell ain't no Halo pistol. They're not bad guns in terms of usability, but game feel is important, and these feel iffy. What I will say is the shotgun is amazing. Sharp, powerful, immediate sound with a gun cock on the end, and since it's a close range weapon, the ballooning reticles don't affect it much, and it's just generally really fun to use. As for how Mass Effect 1 handles ammo, I'll get into that in a minute. Also, I should note that I'm not against ballooning reticles in games, but this game has some of the largest ballooning reticles I have ever seen, and it isn't even exactly tactical, even on higher difficulties. And since it's also filled with powers that have perfect accuracy, the reticles just feel out of place here. Likewise, by and large, the powers suffer from a lack of satisfying feedback. It's no coincidence that the most enjoyable abilities out of both the biotic and tech skill line are Lift and Singularity because they are the only moves that give a solid level of concrete feedback. Most powers simply have the character perform a wind-up animation, the enemy sparks with a couple particle effects, and that's that. And it's, frankly, boring. The powers in ME1, while brimming with utility, lack any serious kind of bite. Like I said before, they're limp. This is made worse by the fact that you can only hotkey a single power at a time in ME1, which means you are going to spend a lot of time in menus, and time spent in menus is death to game flow in action games. Then again, with the 60 second metagel cooldown and the long shield regen times, ME1's game flow is pretty wanting in the first place. In spite of being the first game in the franchise, though, ME1 has two combat elements to call its own, Hover Grenades and the Mako. The Hover Grenades are a fun tool to play around with and offer a satisfying option for flanking opponents, but with no way to tell where it is after you throw it out besides its incredibly small render model means it's easy to let it fly too far and miss its target. 
It's a cool idea that I kinda wish was maintained with at least weapon-based classes, but its implementation left some things to be desired. Then there's the Mako, which has a gun that's satisfying to use, but it controls, uh, not great. I am excited to see it come back in Andromeda because I think it can be an amazing gameplay addition, but in ME1, it was a frustration just as often as it was an asset. Likewise, the cover system is also not good. It's clunky. You press an analog stick to take cover, sometimes running at a wall will put you in cover, sometimes it won't, sometimes you'll just fall out of cover for no reason, and it's a mess, and probably stands as the worst cover system I've ever seen in a AAA game. One area, however, that ME1 does for the most part nail is its enemy design. There's a really nice mix of monstrous enemies like the Rachni and Husks in conjunction with dude and armor enemies like the Geth and Mercs. This kind of design means you're never engaging in one kind of encounter so frequently that it begins to feel repetitive. Plus, with the way the main missions are laid out, you'll always have something new to fight on the next planet. The one major downside, however, is that the Geth are overwhelmingly the primary antagonists you fight against, with them appearing in literally every primary mission, meaning that you can orient your team around anti-synthetic builds and steamroll most of the core game. This downside is diminished somewhat by doing side quests, but if you're just doing a casual replay, there's literally no reason not to stack anti-synthetic gear in easy mode. It. Finally, there's ammo management, and I saved this for last because it's impossible to really talk about it without comparing it to the biggest change made in Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect 1's system of having guns that overheat when fired too long is one of the strongest elements of world building I've ever seen for a futuristic society. Admittedly, the mechanic itself in practice is shamelessly stolen from Halo's energy weapons, but I'm willing to forgive that for the sheer amount of effort that they put into explaining it in Mass Effect. Likewise, the explanation for heat clips in Mass Effect 2 is one of the dumbest and most absurd pieces of retconning I have ever seen. Like, you invented ammo in a game where previously I had an assault rifle with such efficient heat dampening that it would literally never stop firing. It's probably the single worst piece of writing in the entire Mass Effect series that doesn't involve a hologram. But we're not here to discuss world building. We're here to talk about combat. And, well, I know some people will disagree with this, but reloading feels good. Or at least feels better than waiting for an overheated weapon to cool down. The option to reload grants players an incredibly meaningful choice to any combat encounter in any game. And making choices are what makes games fun. Hell, it's what makes games games. Games that lack a reload are fine, it's all a matter of what a game is trying to accomplish after all, but overheating is a version of reloading, and frankly, is usually the inferior version. This is because active reloading grants the player a choice. Waiting for a weapon to cool down takes one away. When a weapon overheats in any game, be it Mass Effect 1, Halo, or Time Slitters, it doesn't feel good. The pain of, oh hell, I have to reload, is never half as bad as the pain of, oh hell, I have to wait for my weapon to cool down, because if your weapon is cooling down, that means you screwed up. And the loud, panicked beeping that each overheated weapon in Mass Effect 1 has doesn't help. Conversely, reloading feels good, especially if the reload animation is satisfying, which Mass Effect 2's is. It keeps players engaged by granting them that much more agency and makes the guns feel a little more real. Weapon overheating does have a place. A great example of this is Mech Warrior, where weapon overheating serves to make you feel more like you're piloting a massive mech that you have to handle with skill and care. In Mass Effect 1 though, it only serves to make things feel a little more futuristic, and I don't think it's worth the trade-off in terms of game feel. Given the choice, I would prefer that both kinds of weapons existed in the game, but I know which one I would pick. All of this to say that I support the change to reload based weapons, I just wish they'd gone about writing it in a bit better. So with that out of the way, I can say this. I don't think I've ever seen any other shooter jump so sharply in terms of gameplay quality from one title to the next than the jump from Mass Effect 1 to 2. Like, it still has its flaws, but this is legitimately one of the best shooters I have ever played. It's essentially like if you took Gears of War and added magic to it. The gunplay in Mass Effect 2 is punchy, varied, and satisfying. The guns have been drastically improved both in their design and their feel. Not only does nearly every gun have a powerful feel behind it with quality sound effects, 
effects and quality particle effects, but every gun is now distinct with their own handling and functionality. For a good example, let's look at the sniper rifles. You have the fast reloading one shot, a semi-automatic with a large clip, and a slightly slower reloading, harder hitting one shot. And while one of those is debatably a direct upgrade to another, it still grants the player a more meaningful choice and variety in their weapons than ME1 did. Every weapon has at least three different models that all handle noticeably different from one another. Powers have also been drastically improved. The move pool has unfortunately been slightly reduced overall, but in its place is a stable of moves that are more satisfying and interesting to use than the ones found in the original. Most of the buff and debuff related abilities have been cut and replaced with more powerful damaging moves and moves designed to create exploitable openings that all have strong animations behind them. Let's look at the engineer for instance. In Mass Effect 1, two of their moves were buffs, one was a crowd control, and four are damage dealers, three of which that do X amount of normal damage in a Y meter radius. Conversely, the Mass Effect 2 Engineer only has two damage dealing moves that you can choose to turn into heavy hitters or AoEs that focus primarily on dealing either organic or synthetic damage. So regardless of the situation, you have a meaningful damage dealing tool at all times that rewards a little bit of game knowledge. From here, there's a crowd control stun, two tools to create your own minions, and an extra bonus power acquired halfway through the game. This all comes together to give the player a lot more options as to how to deal with the situation compared to ME1. You can shoot your way out, use a damaging power, create a minion, or do something all your own that wasn't even meant to be part of your toolkit, and it looks like this for every class. However, in spite of how powerful all your options are, it never feels broken due to the fact that all powers now operate on a shared global cooldown rather than individual ones, so now you can't just spam them. You have to think at least a little strategically. Likewise, the cover system has been drastically improved, which is to say it, uh, works now. Yeah, it's basically ripped straight from Gears of War, but, you know, why bother reinventing the wheel if it still rolls? The teammate controls have been improved to allow you to hotkey one of each of their powers, as well as command them as individuals, granting a cleaner mean of controls for each encounter. Finally, the health system has been completely overhauled, largely for the better. Shields regen far faster now, which combined with the improvements made to cover and the ability to hotkey three moves at once, create a much faster gameplay experience than ME1. Downtime is kept to an absolute minimum, and in conjunction with the changes to weapons and powers, means the players always have a meaningful choice they could be making in the heat of battle. On the downside, health regens with shields. This does keep the pace of the gameplay fast, but it has two knock-on effects. One, it breaks metagel. Since you don't need to use it to heal yourself, its only remaining function is to revive teammates. And since metagel is still plentiful and you're able to upgrade your metagel capacity fairly quickly, it essentially leads to your teammates being immortal because you probably aren't ever going to be unable to heal them. And number two, it feels oddly arcadey for a series that's so grounded in reality. Like, Mass Effect has never been an early Tom Clancy game or anything like that, but this kind of health system means that it's basically impossible for each fight to have any kind of lasting consequence due to no lasting damage, especially in conjunction with the aforementioned Metagel problem. This is probably one of the several culprits that made people say that ME2 was dumbed down, because this feels more gamey than something in Mass Effect probably should. And yes, I realize that it's justified in the game's writing, much like the infinite ammo was justified in Mass Effect 1, but it still feels off in much the same way. For me, this feels like an instance of something probably being a good call for the game's pacing, but a bad call for the game's tone. In addition, the overwhelming majority of enemies are now humanoids, usually mercenaries, collectors, or geth. You'll occasionally get husks or dog-like creatures such as Varen, but I'd say roughly 98% of fights are against dudes in armor who shoot guns, which, after me one solid enemy gallery, is a real disappointment. It also has this weird habit of putting these named enemies at the end of missions as generic bosses, but save one or two, none of them have behavior different from standard enemies. It feels like a lazy attempt to cap off each mission without putting too much work in. Overall, the encounters never become boring, but they do begin to blend together and few really stand out. And given how much fun the combat system is, that is really unfortunate. Finally, while ME2 did drop the Mako and Hover Grenades, the latter of which I personally think should have just been put into the Soldier's Toolkit, it does have two things all its own in the trilogy. First is the Hammerhead, which is, uh... Jesus, how did you make the Mako worse? Secondly are Heavy Weapons, which, honestly, I really like. 
They're a fun tool with a lot of variety that lets people have cool weapons regardless of their class. What few fights that do stand out typically stand out because of this weapon's use. They grant a level of spectacle that is frequently hard to find elsewhere. You probably won't get to use it too often due to how sparse ammo is, but it's satisfying to know that you have it available to you. Most of the time, I can see why something was removed from a game. I get why Ice Climbers and Wolf were removed from Smash 4. I can respect why the Assault Rifle was removed in Halo 2. And I can understand why the Mako and Hammerhead were killed, especially given the plot of Mass Effect 3. But I cannot at all grasp why Bioware would remove heavy weapons as primary equipment. I know they're still there as pickups, but they're rare, way weaker, and it's just not the same. Finally, this brings us to Mass Effect 3. First off, yes, it does have a truly garbage ending. One of the top three worst endings I've ever seen in all of media, in fact. It's dumb, disconnected from the rest of the story, and I encourage all of you to just come up with your own ending instead. My personal headcanon is that Shepard punches the Reaper King, the Reapers become chill, and spend the rest of their days beating Russians at chess. Post your ending in the comments. Putting that aside, however, in terms of pure combat mechanics, I consider Mass Effect 3 to be on par with games like Resident Evil 4 and Vanquish. I have have my problems at large with the contents of this game, but in terms of pure combat, I struggle to think of many things I don't like about it. For starters, few games have a weapon arsenal as varied and distinctive as Mass Effect 3's. In the base game alone, there are over 30 weapons that all have their own distinct feel and use, all of which are customizable with bonus parts and are more than capable of carrying you through the entire game. No matter what your playstyle, you will be able to find a well-crafted and balanced weapon that suits the kind of experience that you want to have. One surprising yet welcome change is allowing every class to wield any weapon. This change further expands the build options at the player's disposal and allows for a bit more creative freedom in how the player can prepare. And even here, they found a way to add a bit more depth with the introduction of weapon weight that increases weapon cooldowns when heavier weapon is equipped and vice versa. In this way, Bioware is able to encourage players to pursue certain builds that are geared towards their vision of what they should be without removing any of the player's options. If you're playing an engineer, it's probably in your best interest to keep your weapon weight low so you can spam powers. But nothing is stopping you from equipping an ultralight sniper rifle and an assault rifle as I did in my last playthrough and being extra gunplay oriented. But this isn't to say that powers have been downplayed at all. Quite the opposite, in fact. They return from ME2 with the same level of diversity, polish, and punch. Not only that, but Mass Effect 3 has more powers in it than any other game in the series, with each of those powers having more customization available to them. Half the way through upgrading them, every stat begins to grant the player personalization choices. Things like adding an AoE to attack, or granting them a stronger punch. In game, this translates into a combat experience that feels very much like you have command over it due to you having a character that is crafted specifically for your playstyle, especially if you opt to carry a light load for rapid cooldown times. Nearly every element of the base game has been refined to a mere sheen. The cover system has been improved to allow for things like quickly rolling between pieces of cover. There is now a rich menagerie of enemies ranging from monsters to dudes in armor with unique qualities and basically everything in between. The rogues gallery is still primarily humanoid, but it's varied enough that they avoid blending together. The health system has been made to feel more in keeping with the world's tome by taking Halo 1 system of having chunks of core health hidden behind shields, giving each fight the possibility of leaving a lasting impact with persistent damage and making Metagel a precious resource again. However, shields are still strong and regen rapidly, so it never feels unduly punishing. Everything just works so much better than it ever has. Naturally, Mass Effect 3 does come with a couple ideas all its own. First, and perhaps most surprisingly, is that melee is not only a more practical option than any ME game before, but is now a viable mechanic to craft your entire build around. With the introduction of heavy hits and grab kills, it's clear that Bioware wanted to make it a possible play option for all those who wanted to pursue it. Every class has the option to increase its melee damage dramatically. The Vanguard class in particular comes packed with moves that encourage players to use physical combat as often as anything else. This kind of close quarters combat style is further incentivized by the game's inclusion of a dodge roll, making such aggressive tactics far safer and more viable. Also, it has some turret sections which, uh... Yeah, sure, I guess. They're fun enough, but nothing to write home about. Also, also, you can jump into a mech suit, and yeah, this is pretty awesome, but it's also really rare and pretty shallow mechanically. 
Enjoy your badass railgun and mediocre first-person aiming. Finally, Mass Effect 3 has something that I feel is really easy to overlook, but adds a layer of complexity to combat situations that would be sorely missed otherwise. Ladders. No, wait, don't leave, just give me a second. You see, the thing about ladders or any kind of equipment that lets you move up a floor in shooters is they literally make fights three-dimensional. Managing enemies on multiple planes can be one of the most challenging and rewarding experiences games can offer you. Doing so requires constant attention on your surroundings, strong spatial awareness, and makes each fight feel more tense and frantic because there are now more locations enemies can come from. Likewise, ladders can also serve as precious escape points in moments where you're pinned down, granting you a reward for map knowledge and situational awareness. These are less of a factor on more linear stages like Rannoch, but in the side missions that take place on multiplayer maps, they can serve to make the levels feel far more rich than they would otherwise. I can't believe I just wrote a paragraph on why ladders are cool. SOMEBODY PLEASE THROW ME IN A LOCKER! Despite all of this though, I do have a couple criticisms. While the cover system is fantastic as a rule, it can get finicky. It was rare, but I'd be lying if I said there wasn't more than one occasion where I tried to take cover and found myself repeatedly dodge rolling into a chest eye wall. Once again, synthetic enemies are rare enough that it's almost stupid to spec your build around them. And it does continue the series tradition of having really mediocre boss fights. However, beyond that, I earnestly struggle to think of any other problems I have with the core combat. Um, I could whine more about the ending, but, well, you know. I think everything positive I could say about the combat can be summed up like this. When it was announced that Mass Effect 3 would have multiplayer, my eyes just about rolled out of my skull. It just smacked of a corporately mandated mode shoved in there for the sake of desperately trying to capture an audience that it did not want, nor wanted it. Cynical doesn't even begin to describe it. I had no plans to touch it, but the galactic readiness feature meant I had to either do multiplayer or this terrible Farmville waiting game in order to get the ending that I wanted. Which is to say, I didn't really have a choice. But it was around the time I saw another player chewing through Reaper forces with biotic whips while I did clean up with my sniper rifle while a third player crowd controlled the incoming wave with a singularity that I realized something. This is amazing. I loved Mass Effect 3's multiplayer, and to this day, I can't believe it turned out so well. However, the sole reason it did turn out so well is that the core mechanics were so strong to begin with. Like, I'm not exaggerating, the first time I finished Mass Effect 3, I tried to go play some Gears of War 3, because I wanted some more cover shooting, and it just felt so sterile by comparison, I couldn't play it. I can't tell you how much I would gleefully pay for another shooter with such a broad arsenal of weapons and magic powers with such a satisfying focus on team coordination. Oh, right, that. This is all a bit disingenuous, to be honest. Mass Effect ultimately has never been about the combat. It is, and always has been, a series first and foremost about the writing. I certainly didn't replay Mass Effect 1 so often in my teens because I wanted more combat. I replayed it because I wanted to experience this fascinating universe and see if I could manage to mine it further for just a little bit more info each time. And when it came time for Mass Effect 2 and 3, I wasn't excited to see what the new shotgun would look like. I was excited to know what was going on with Garrus, Joker, and Tally. However, as far as popularity is concerned, writing can only carry a game so far. Isn't that right, Zero Escape? These games have reached a broader audience than I think anyone would have guessed based on their hard science, geeky, Star Trek-based origins. And I believe the combat was instrumental to that success. And even though its writing is what carries it more than anything, I'd be lying if I didn't say that watching Mass Effect go from a dry but functional shooter to one of the most inventive and exciting action games I've ever played was one of my favorite things to experience in this last generation. Even if the ending is still the worst.